This is it. It is finally over. After all this time, it's all done. Mueller finds no Trump Russia conspiracy, but that stops short of ex exonerating president on obstruction of justice. That's from the New York Times. From USA Today, Mueller report investigation finds no evidence of Russia conspiracy, leaves obstruction question open. Department of Justice, Trump campaign did not coordinate with Russia in 2016. Now, what was that thing early? You might be saying, like, what about that other thing? Um, stops short of exonerating president on obstruction of justice. Um, that's from the New York Times. And again, leaves obstruction question open. What does that mean? Like, what about that? Did, did, did maybe, maybe there's still something to this, huh? Like, maybe there's still, um, maybe there's still something to it, is what they're saying. Well, no, not really. It's, it's kind of like you can't prove the name. They're saying there was no evidence of collusion between Trump and Russia. That was the point of this report, was to find evidence of collusion between Trump and Russia. That was Mueller's entire job. And he's put it out and he said no. Now again, is it possible that there was obstruction by um, Russia in an entirely separate thing that had nothing to do with Trump? I suppose it's possible. Is it possible that Kenya or Burundi or Brunei or um, or, or Burkina Faso <laughs> I don't know what's with all the, the, the B-letter countries but uh, that came to mind. But of all these, like, is it possible that Malta um, obstructed our election? I suppose it's possible. But we haven't even looked into that. We don't even, we don't think about anything. We don't think about that at all because there's no evidence. But what we can say from the, from the Mueller report, or at least the, the announcement about the Mueller report, because it's not public, was that there is no collusion. We have found that. <sighs> but yeah, this is... Here we go. They actually um, read Barr's letter to Congress in full below outlining the conclusions of Mueller's investigation. So we're going to do that quick. I'm just saying, like, here, here it all is for us to read from USA Today. And I'm going to go through it. In, and now there will no doubt be a bit of a, a bit of a, an ongoing thing of you should make this public. And sure, I support. Make it public. Declassify Mueller's report to the best of their ability. I want them to do that and we'll read it again. But there is nothing. Two, over two years of a conspiracy there. Now, I'm not against looking into things. I'm not against saying maybe. I'm not against saying possibly. Um, if you if you th suspect something, sure, bring it up. But they have been so, like, this is both the media. This is both, like, progressive. They have, they've been so, like, like, they have been so confident in this. And there is nothing at all. And honestly, I was quite confident there was that there was nothing from the start. Why? Not because I'm overconfident, not because I am not because I'm biased or partisan or anything, but because they started putting out these weird things. Like these weird things like, oh, here's some evidence, here's some evidence, here's some evidence, and it's like, well, I mean, these things aren't evidence. <laughs> so if so if you had evidence, you would put that forward, but they didn't, right? And then when it whenever it came to um interfering with an election like i that, that's so vague like hack the election everything was so vague they kept changing their terms and it's like well i mean i don't deny that russia um interfered in the sense of influenced our election yeah because there is such a thing called rt like the russian today it's a television network and no doubt americans were watching rt and no doubt rt was influencing them was influencing in some way just as did did the united kingdom's government influence the u.s election well lots of americans watch the bbc and the BBC is very anti-Trump. So could there be influence there? Sure, there was influence, but was there was there something illegal? Was there a, a like a, a hacking or anything? And as far as we can tell, no. So I'm just putting it out there. No, there was nothing here. This, but <coughs> excuse me. The special counsel's report. On Friday, the special counsel submitted to me a confidential report explaining the, the prosecution or declination decisions he has reached as required by um, that thing. What does this thing get out of my way? Um, this report is entitled Report on the Investigation into Russian Interference in the 2016 Presidential Election. So note that. That's the title of the report. Report on the Investigation into Russian Interference in the 2016 Presidential Election. So it's kind of like... um. So it's kind of like if you uh, if I made a video on... It's like... Uh, imagine if I if I made a video saying... um. Say, saying like um oh I, I agree with I agree with um Trump on this one issue like I'm the whole point of my video was to say I agree with Trump on this one issue here are my thoughts on the issue and this is why we agree and then imagine like the New York Times reporting on on my video and they would say well he doesn't comment on his opinion on Kamala Harris which is like yeah because that had nothing to do with anything like yes that wasn't part of what we were talking about so when they title this like oh well it never says that um there was any kind of obstruction of justice it's like that wasn't part of the report. That wasn't the job of the report. As we've seen right here, the report is entitled Report on the Investigation into Russian Interference in the 2016 Presidential Election. But that's all they did. Russian interference and they found no collusion between Trump and Russia. 
That's that's it. That that's the report. And of course, I'm, I've read all kinds of reports, and it's always important. Like the reports never say more than they have to. The reports never say this didn't happen. All they say is we found no evidence. So when they're saying like, oh well, they they didn't, they didn't exonerate him completely. It's like yeah, reports don't do that. Like that's not the job. Like from all the reports I've read, maybe these are this is a different kind of report. But from the all, all the reports I've read in terms of medicine, in terms of law, all this stuff, they don't seem to ever say like definitely did not happen they say we found no evidence of it and that's our job but we can say well we have to assume innocent like innocent until proven guilty we found nothing and that's exactly what happened here although my review is ongoing i believe that it is in the public interest to describe the report and to summarize the principal conclusions reached by the special counsel and the results of his investigation the report explains that the special counsel and his staff thoroughly investigated allegations that members of the presidential campaign of Donald J. Trump and others associated with it conspired with the Russian government in its efforts to interfere in the 2016 U.S. presidential election or sought to obstruct the related federal investigations. In the report, the special counsel noted that in completing his investigation, he employed 19 lawyers who were assisted by the team, approximately 40 FBI agents, intelligence analysts, forensic accountants, and other professional staff. The special counsel issued more than 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, obtained more than 230 orders for communication records, issued almost 50 orders authorizing use of pen registers, made 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence, and interviewed approximately 500 witnesses. The special counsel obtained a number of indictments and convictions of individuals and entities in connection with his investigation, all of which have been publicly disclosed. During the course of this investigation, uh, the special counsel also referred ma several matters to other offices for further action. The report does not recommend any further indictments, nor did the special counsel obtain any sealed indictments that have yet to be made public. Below, I summarize the principal conclusions set out in the Ru special counsel's report. Russian inter interference into in the 2016 U.S. presidential presidential election. I cannot talk today, and I'm supposed to be reading this. The special counsel's report is divided into two parts. The first describes the results of the U of the special counsel's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. The report outlines the Russian effort to influence the election and documents crimes committed by persons associated with with the Russian government in connection with those efforts. The report further explains that a primary consideration for the special counsel's investigation was whether any Americans, including individuals associated with the Trump campaign, joined the Russian conspiracy joined the Russian conspiracies to influence the election, which would be a federal crime. The special counsel's investigation did not find the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election. As the report says, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in, in its election interference or activities. Well, there you go. Like, remember that. Like, I think that's something worth pointing out. Again, did um did Russia influence our election? I suppose they or did they try to? Well, obviously, duh. Like as I just said, RT is a thing, and I would consider that influence. It's just like it's not anything illegal. It's not any like a conspiracy. It's just something blatant and like no duh. Again, does pretty much every government with a media has, tries to influence our election because the media puts out things that might be read, especially with YouTube, might be watched and, and um, taken in by U.S. citizens, stuff like that. That's influence. And I think they found they did have, like, there was they, there is such thing as, like, Russian bot farms or Russia paid for, like, 2,000 Facebook ads or something, and it was something, like, a pretty much negligible amount, like, um... It was something like 0.04%. And that's not what's important. What's important is the, did Trump collude with Russia? That was the big question. And everyone's going to try to take these little things like, what about this? What about this? What about this? The conclusion is wrapped up. Done. <laughs> and even Cenk Uger of the Young Turks even put out something saying, well, um, well, well the, I, I'm a bit worried because they point, he tweeted out something. I'll try to link it in the description. Pointed out something along the lines of, well, um, I hope he checked before. I hope Mueller read checked before and after too. Because um, I'm not just concerned with, uh, with interference to interfere with the election before the election, but I'm also considered about Russia, concerned about Russian interference to hack the election after the election already happened. And it's like, what? <laughs> uh, it's nonsense. The special counsel's investigation determined that there were two main Russian efforts to influence the 2016 election. The first involved attempts by a Russian organization, the, Inter the Internet Research Agency, to conduct disinformation and so me social media operations in the United States designed to sow social discord, eventually with the aim of interfering with the election. As noted above, the special counsel did not find that any U.S. person or Trump campaign official or associate conspired or knowingly coordinated with the IRA in its efforts. Although the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian nationals and entities can in connection with these activities, Activities. And yes, this is something like that I consider pretty much separate from the Trump Russia conclusion. Because as we've said, like that was the big thing. That was the big thing that everyone put forward. Trump Russia conclusion or collusion. 
Now, this thing, the second thing that they say, like, yes, we did find some some Russian organization tried to, to put out some stuff. I believe this is what I have just mentioned, the Internet Research Agency. I believe they were the ones that put out the Facebook ads. And it was something like, again, like negligible. Now, that's still pretty bad, but then it's, it's like compared to what? Because uh, name one world power that doesn't interfere with other elections. And it's like, I don't know if you can, because how many, how many U.S. In, or how many elections have the have the United States interfered with? Like hundreds, especially most of them. It's just like we, we outright completely, um, we we completely take control of it. And they're like, here's our puppet. I don't know. Not to say that any of this is right, but it's just stuff that's kind of like a no-brainer. The big question, well, it wasn't whether Russia tried to interfere with our election, because again, that's a no-brainer, because we do the same thing. Everyone does the same thing. Every world power tries to interfere. We found out that we had um, Angela Merkel's um, like office was bugged, like Obama's, the Obama administration bugged it, and they recently found that out. So stuff like that, it's like, yeah, everyone's kind of doing that. But the big question, the big important question was, is the election legitimate? Which, as far as we can tell, yes. And two, was there any conclusion between Trump and Russia? And um, no. <laughs> Uh, the second element involved the Russian government's efforts to con conduct computer hacking operations designed to gather and disseminate information to influence the election. The special counsel found that Russian government actors successfully hacked into computers and obtained emails from persons affiliated with the Clinton campaign and Democratic Party organizations and publicly disseminated those materials through various intermediaries, including WikiLeaks. Based on these activities, the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian military officers for conspiring to hack into computers in the U.S. And United States for for purposes of influencing the election. But as noted above, the special counsel did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in these efforts, despite multiple offers from Russian-affiliated individuals to assist the Trump campaign. Now this, I'm not really bothered by it. Like, this does not bug me, the fact that they supposedly hacked into the DNC. And again, we're still not sure if it's them. Like, I've seen a lot of evidence that it was Seth Rich that was the one that did it, um, and, and not Russia. But even if it was Russia, okay, as the report states, they said it was Russia. And that doesn't bug me in the slightest because, again, it's like imagine if um, imagine if someone were to hack into my phone and find out that like or, or to hack into anyone's phone and find out that they've been having a secret affair. It's like, well, who are you mad at? The guy that hacked the phone or the guy that um, was having the affair? It's like I'm more mad at the person having the affair. And frankly, I'm going to thank the guy that hacked into the phone. I'm really not going to be upset with him if, if, they, if he exposed some someone's affair. It's like, OK, um. It's kind of like, um, like again, imagine if, um, if, if, if they found out that I was like money laundering or something. Or if I, imagine if I was money laundering and someone found out by like hacking into my computer and finding that out. And it's like, well, or and looking through my records, and it's like, well, who are you more mad at, the guy that hacked into my stuff or me for doing the money laundering? It's like, I'm, I'm not too concerned that when someone exposes corruption, I'm not too concerned about who exposed the corruption. I'm concerned about the corruption itself and who is doing it. So that's all I have to say about that. In assessing potential conspiracy charges, the special counsel also considered whether members of the Trump campaign coordinated with Russian election interference activities. The special counsel defined coordination as an agreement, tacit or express, between the Trump campaign campaigners, what? Um, I don't know if it's typo or what, and the Russian government on election interference. Obstruction of justice. The report's second part addresses a number of actions by the president, most of which have been the subject of public reporting that the special counsel investigated as potentially raising obstruction of justice concerns. After making a thorough factual investigation into these matters, the special counsel considered whether to evaluate the conduct of the department's standards governing prosecution and declination decisions, but ultimately determined not to make a traditional prosecutorial judgment. Special counsel, therefore, did not draw a conclusion one way or the other as to whether the examined conduct constituted obstruction. Instead, for each of the relevant actions investigated, the report set out evidence on both sides of the question and leaves unresolved... Um, sets out evidence on both sides of the question and leaves unresolved what the special counsel views as difficult issues of law and fact concerning whether the president's actions and intent could be viewed as obstruction. The special counsel states that while this report did not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Well, again, that's the thing. It's like, well... For now, we're innocent and proven guilty. So if you can find me evidence, and I encourage you to go out and look for evidence, then I'll take you seriously. Until then, if you say there's nothing to commit a crime, it's like, again, innocent until proven guilty. That's what I have to rely on. And that's what I think any decent person should rely on. The special counsel's decision to describe the facts of his obstruction investigation without reaching any legal conclusions leaves it to the attorney general to determine whether the conduct described in the report constitutes a crime. 
Over the course of the investigation, the special counsel office engaged in discussions with certain department officials regarding many of the legal and factual matters at issue in the special counsel's obstruction investigation. After reviewing the special counsel's final report on these issues, consulted with, consulting with department officials, including the Office of Legal Counsel, and applying the principles of federal prosecution that guide our charging decisions, Deputy Eternal, D Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and I have concluded that the evidence developed in during the special counsel's investigation is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Our determination was made without regard to and is not based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. In other words, no evidence. Or like not enough to, like there might be something there, but if there is, we haven't found it. That's basically what it says. <clears throat> in, in making this decision, um, we noted that the special counsels recognized that the special counsel recognized that the evidence does not establish that the president was involved in an underlying crime related to Russian inter election interference, and that while not determinative, the absence of such evidence bears upon the president's intent with respect to obstruction. Generally speaking, to obtain and sustain an obstruction conviction, the government would need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a person acting with corrupt intent engaged in obstructive conduct with a sufficient nexus to a pending or contemplated pr proceeding. Yes, as is the process with our judicial system and we're done with corrupt intent each of which under the department's principles of federal prosecution guiding charging decisions would need to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt to establish an obstruction of justice events and then the rest thing i think i'm not even going to read through the rest because as we've seen if you want to read it i'll leave it in the description um i glanced over it and it, this does not seem to be anything that really like is worth going further um i read the part that says what they what was the i read the important part but again link in the description if you want to read it but yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> so we can finally shut up about this. We can, after the long conspiracy theory, which again, I'm not against the idea of doing an investigation. I'm upset with the media acting as if this was some major thing and like they had all kinds of evidence and stuff and nothing. It's like if, it's, like they were saying, they were using as evidence. I remember an article they were using evidence as um like a bunch of uh, our Trump's servers in Trump Tower were pinged like hundreds of times by Russian servers. And it's like, no crap, any, and like, do people not know what pinging is? Like, that is, that means nothing. Like, I bet the person reporting that had tons of Russian, um, uh, of pings from Russian servers. No doubt. But um, we're done now. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. We can finally end this. Um, ignore the, this, I saw someone's tweet that said, the Russians got to Mueller, and I can't tell if it's satire or not, but if it isn't, oh, God help that man. Um, yeah, like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. And thanks for watching.